I've seen all of season two of The Morning Show. It's what we call very good. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, your uh, friends and family are going to enjoy your work on this season. Do you think? Any- do you think I'm going to get props on the family WhatsApp thread? Because that's the real that's the real testament to whether or not you're doing good work. I think it's for sure, and I will say why. Because you have scenes with both Reese and uh, Jen. So, I mean, I think your family's going to be like, well, holy shit. Yeah, Minhaj family credibility. There we go. Okay, got it. Um, so before I jump into morning show and, and all that stuff, you're about to go on tour. Yes. And I'm curious, how long does it actually take for you to come up with the material that you're going to do on a tour like this? Yeah, so so I'm about to go on tour for The King's Jester. My last comedy special was called Homecoming King. That came out in 2017. I've been writing this show for the past three years. And it was ready to go before the pandemic. And then obviously things updated and happened during the pandemic. So I continued to write over the past year, year and a half. Um, so this show has been four years in the making. And, um, you know, to me, it really is the next evolution of of the things that have happened to me, not only in my life, um, but to my family. And so if if you've been to my shows before, you know, there's there's comedy, there's storytelling, there's parts that make you cry. And there's a bunch of screens and, and kind of theater theatrics that happen behind behind me as well. So I, I, I'm really excited to kind of have a, a show, um, a touring show, you know, back on the road again. It'll be really fun. You're doing, I think, five nights in Boston. How much pressure do you feel in your uh, to like make sure each night is maybe a little different? Or like, I mean, can you sort of talk about that? Totally. So, there, you know, again, it's the show itself is quite similar. Yes, even though it is a, a, a stand-up show, it leans more towards theatrical storytelling. There's lighting cues, there's graphics cues, there's a there's an actual stage and stage design and lighting design that all comes together. And um, we have an incredible team, Aaron Ryan and Jaffe Weidman, who, who have done incredible work on Broadway, are now coming into the space. And the exciting part is, is, is those Broadway theatrical elements meeting the the sort of live in the room stand-up storytelling elements and so when i'm in boston you know there's definitely going to be some material that's topical in nature and then we'll pivot into kind of stuff that's a little bit more evergreen and 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 true to the show um that's the fun part it's doing that dance and i I can't wait to come to boston yeah that's also a great town to do any but that that's a whole different thing so it's one of the best comedy cities in the country by the way it's great yeah no Boston's fantastic. Um, so jumping into the show, when, sure, when sure. you were approached for them for getting involved in this, how much did they sort of tell you about the arc of what your character would be doing? And how much are you like, oh, this show is awesome, whatever you need me to do? Yeah, so the when I actually got the materials, one of the audition pieces that I got was the first scene that you see Eric in. I had to do a song and dance number. And so my agent calls me, it was the wedding of my, sorry, it's, it was the weekend of my sister's wedding. And so I get, I get an email from my agent um, and we're getting ready to go to the reception dinner. And he goes, hey, listen, man, I think you'd be perfect for this. I think you should put yourself on tape. And I go, who am I gonna record lines with? My wife said, no, my mom has always wanted to join SAG-AFTRA. So she was down to do, she was down to do the audition. So I straight up did my song and dance number that you see in season two of the morning show with Reese. I did that with my mom, and and I, I guess they found it endearing and cute. And and Mimi and Carrie at the show um, reached out and they said, "Hey, we'd love for you to be a part of the show." And I didn't know anything else about Eric's arc on the show. They just in the character description said he's a young, charismatic uh, TV host that comes in to join the morning show, and and then. Um, you know, problems ensue. I didn't know what those problems would be. Um, what do you like? Uh, what do you think might surprise people to learn about the making of the morning show, like the behind the scenes, not the COVID of it all, because obviously the COVID sucks and it's, you know, but I'm just curious about the other stuff. Sure. I think one of the things that's most impressive about the show is I've never been on a production with this level of scale or grand grandeur. And you see that translate through the screen. I mean, like no expense is spared. There's a scene that you'll see in season two that takes place during New Year's. They recreated Times Square just for the scene that me and Reese are doing when we're bringing in the ball drop. And and when I was looking around, uh, you know, that day with all the extras, all the green screen, all just the practical things that they had to build in California to recreate New York City, 
it's just it's just an incredible feat. They they really spare no expense in in, in what uh, the team at Apple and the Morning Show would do to recreate that entire world is pretty incredible. It's truly incredible. Yeah, um, uh, uh, Apple. I've said this to other people. Apple doesn't have as much content as say Netflix, but the stuff they make is very very good. Yeah, there's two things that I think people are going to really see when you see it through the actual screen. Just scale and quality, the scale and scope of the vision, like what you're actually putting on camera, and then the the actual just intrinsic quality of the cinematography, the work, um, all the stuff that you see in set design, lighting design, all of that stuff is is really, really incredible. It's why their shows are so great. Uh, this season has really good storylines for all the characters. Uh, besides, have you seen the episodes yet? I've seen some of them. I haven't seen all of them. Got it. Oh, I was going to. You've seen. You've know. seen all the way. You've seen all the way to ten. Yeah, I saw the whole season. That's crazy. Because there's still. Because you know they're still mi- they're still like mixing and editing some of the episodes. And that's wild. Yeah, some of the episodes I saw were very. Uh, there, like episode seven or eight was. Um, I'm going to use the term rough in terms of seeing the sure. green screen and yeah, you know, right. You know what I mean. Right. But, they haven't popped stuff in yet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I understand what they're going for. That I mean, the performances and the storyline are so good, it makes no difference that you're seeing in, in a rougher stage. Yeah. And and one of the things that I think is is really amazing, I actually think based on the script, season two is going to be much better than season one. And the depth in the run runway room that they gave Steve Carell, um, Jen, Reese, Karen Pittman is incredible in the show. Karen is such a a, a force on the show. Deshaun, it really is great. And Greta Lee is fantastic on the show as well. So it's the fact that you have such a sprawling cast of incredible actors and actresses and everybody's, you know, firing on all cylinders. I was really lucky to be a part of it. Yeah, that that's the thing that I commend uh, the, this season on is that all the characters have arcs that yeah. feel believable for the storyline. Sure. You know? sure. Um, I'll, I'll ask you this. So Corey, uh, played by Billy, yes. um, do you view him as a good person? a bad person or it depends on the day of the week. Yeah, so it's interesting. Corey is no different than any other character on the show. One of the central themes and takeaways of the show for me is everybody thinks they're the protagonist and hero of their own story. Corey fundamentally believes he is a good person and he is trying to do good things in the world. Every character on that show is saying, how do I become an ethical person in a fundamentally unethical world? And um, the way you see that unfold in every character's actions is really interesting. That's why I love I love that this show and season two especially explores the grays and nuances of life. And and I'm just saying this as a father of two and as a husband, it is the grays and the nuances of life where that is where all the details are. That is the thing that really tra- tests your humanity and your ethics. I agree. Got to go. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with your families. What app? um you know uh when they contact you i'll let you know what they say i'm gonna i'm gonna post the screen grabs they'll they'll verify whether your assessment was right or not i have one one last question for you did did the song and dance number hit how is how is my family in india going to respond oh um they're going to be i I told you you can't go when you're doing something with reese Uh i mean it doesn't matter what you're doing because everyone (laughs) is i'm being honest like everyone's going to be looking at the two of you together and you guys are great and then, like, look, this this show is what we call, as I said at the beginning, it's very, very good. Great. That's awesome. Thank you, man. Cool. Have a great day. Yeah, man. Be well. Peace.